Thank you for joining. In the previous lesson, I explained DTORs, and we implemented them for both available methods in our project. In this lesson, we will create a POST method for inserting data into the database. Additionally, this action method will be implemented using DTORs. In the previous lesson, I mentioned that the best approach is to send and receive data using DTORs. This means that a client communicates with a server using DTOs for all types of requests, whether it's a GET, POST, or any other operation. In this lesson, we will focus on creating a POST method, specifically for inserting data into the database. The primary concept behind the insert single method we are going to implement in this lesson is to reverse the data flow implemented in the GetById method. In the getById method, we retrieve this data by an ID, and in the POST method, we will receive this data as an argument and then insert it into the database under a GUID. Although we have previously covered implicit model binding in past NetCore lessons, in the upcoming lessons, I promise to explain explicit model binding using attributes, similar to from route. In the current lesson, we will use the fromBody attribute to explicitly bind the model to avoid any bugs. Before we create the method, let's first create a DTO to receive and insert the data. In the DTO folder, make a copy of the DTO file we created in the previous lesson by pressing Ctrl-C, and then paste it with Ctrl-V. Rename the copied file to Insert Solar System DTO. Open the copied file and add the prefix Insert to the class name. Since the GUID will be assigned automatically, we need to remove this property and keep only three properties that we will receive as part of the DTO. Now the DTO is ready. Next, we need to implement a method that will work with a newly created DTO. We can copy and paste the getById method to use it as a boilerplate. Change the attribute to HTTP POST. And you can amend this string since this method responds to the URL API Solar Systems. Please note that both URL addresses for the get all and insert single methods are the same. The only difference is that the get all action method will be triggered by the controller when a get request is received, while the insert single method will be triggered only when a POST request is received. Both methods will provide their own logic. Next, let's rename the method to insert single. You can also name it insert1. Then we will bind the model explicitly and decorate the method's parameter using the from body attribute since the data will be coming from a client in the request body. The parameter type will be insert solar system DTO. And we will name the parameter accordingly as insert solar system DTO. Next, we need to convert the DTO, which will be received as an argument into the action method. In the getById method, we use a GUID to retrieve this data. Now in the insert single method, we will insert the data received from a client as an argument. This means that instead of creating an instance of solar system DTO, we need to create an instance of the solar system model, where the received DTO as an argument will be inserted. Remove the DTO suffixes for both the variable and the class instance. Also remove the S letter from both the current method and the getById method. It should be single. Next, remove the ID property and rename the reference in accordance with the parameter name. You can also get rid of the rest of the code since we don't need it. Now that we can retrieve the data with the current code implementation, the next step is to store the data in the database. For this purpose, we have two simple methods provided by Entity Framework. The first one. On the HiKaiTalkDB context, we need to change the solar system model, apply the add method, and pass it the data we received as an argument. So the solar system variable goes into the add method, and then, via the model and DB context class, it will be recorded into the database. The second step is to save it. So on the HiKaiTalkDB context, simply call save changes. After that, the data is inserted into the database. Referring back to our lesson on status codes, in the content of a web API or web service, when a successful operation creates a resource, like a new record in a database, it's common practice to return a status code of 201. 
uh, let's change the return statement to provide us a 201 status code. We can return either the created at action method or just created. Both of these methods provide the 201 status code. For this example, I will use the created method. Both of these methods definitions are available here. The first argument from the definition will be the URL string, which we can copy from here. Additionally, we need to add the inserted ID. The next argument will be the message, which can be any message you like, such as solar system created. Finally, we need to respond with the DTO. To respond with the DTO, we need to create it. Let's copy this part from the getById method. And here we only need to change the references. As you remember, when we started this lesson, I mentioned that this insert single method will be a mirrored version of the getById method. So the DTO is populated, and that's it. Everything is ready to be tested in Swagger. Now Swagger has provided us with an additional option, which is a post method highlighted in green. When we expand the post method, we will see the structure of the request payload, which is a JSON that our API expects. The response from our API endpoint will typically be documented based on the open API specification. This documentation reflects the structure of the response object that our API endpoint returns. It's worth nothing that the actual object we are returning is solar system DTO and not the model directly. So following the lesson where I mentioned that the DTO needs to be provided to a client for both read and create operations, which is considered a best practice in development, is implemented in our endpoint and reflected here in Swagger. Let's complete it with the second solar system. Code will be TRST. Actually, I don't know if this code does exist. I will use it just to distinguish these records. And for the solar system and the image, it will be the Trappist one. Let's execute it. And Swagger says 201. If you need to trace the path of how the data flows inside the action method, please revisit the previous lesson. Alternatively, using the approach we used to use many times in the past, you can place a breakpoint in Visual Studio and press F5, send the execute command from Swagger and observe the data flow. And to conclude the lesson, let's verify that the data has actually arrived in the database. We can either access it directly from the browser using this address, or you can open SQL Server Management Studio. All is correct, we received data. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!